Good afternoon. Welcome to Booktube with On Day 5. It is 12.38 p.m. I just took a shower. I washed my hair, so it's um, air drying. I'm super hungry, so I have Panera Bread delivery coming up. Last night, I finished Mockingjay, finally, and I watched Mockingjay Part 1. I think I'm going to watch Mockingjay Part 2 tonight. Mockingjay is the second book to make me cry this year. I cry during the part where she says, if we burn, you burn with us. And I just, <laughs> that part gets me every time I just tear up. I, I was listening to the audiobook and the narrator said it and I teared up and I was watching a movie last night and you know, Katniss says it. I cried a bit. It was so good. It's such a good book, series, movie. I just loved it. I love the ending of Mockingjay when I was reading it. If you haven't seen it, I mean, a lot of people have already read it and all that stuff. But if you have not read Mockingjay, the whole Hunger Games series, it is just uh, the last line. It was so satisfying. Even though I was satisfied with the ending, I wasn't necessarily happy because, I don't know, Katniss, like everything she's been through, there was a time jump. And she was just still really sad. Will she ever feel happy? It was realistic in the way how everything that they went through, the Hunger Games, just people dying and like you kill someone and it follows you for the rest of your life. It just feels, it was realistic. It was no way to actually be 100% happy. But I still liked it. I still really, 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 really liked the book, like the movie. And as I said, I have to watch Mockingjay Part 2 tonight, but I already know how it's going to end because the movie and books are insane. It's a good book to movie adaptation. And my order is almost here. I'm watching the tracking of it. Last night I was reading Barracoon because you guys know I said I'm going to finish this book. It's really small. But I was looking at it and I was like, how much did I read? Because I don't remember the introduction because I read the introduction like months ago. When I got to the part where he talked about slavery. It really got to me. It was a little emotional. <laughs> I didn't cry but I had to put it down for a second. Chapter 7 is on slavery. Now I'm on chapter 8 which is on his freedom. The way he found out that he was free was just random. Because you know when Cujo, when this man came to America, slavery was illegal. It was already done for. Him being a slave it was illegal and so he was talking about how when he was coming to America on the ship, it took 70 days, they had to switch ships because the slave owners, masters, they were afraid to get caught. So they would switch ships trying to bring them here, all those people from Africa. Yeah, I'm going to finish this today. I'm not sure if I'm going to read the afterword or if that counts as reading the whole book. I'm going to finish. I just want to finish the last chapter, which I think is chapter 7. Cujo Lewis, in front of his home in Africa town, Alabama, circa 1928, to have his photograph taken, Casala dressed in his best suit and removed his shoes. I want to look like I in Africa, because that's where I want to be. just finished editing my vlog for booktube with on day three i finished my salad i'm about to export the vlog and then read barracoon while it's exporting after it's done exporting i'll make the thumbnail upload it to youtube create my closed captions for the vlog finish barracoon and then i'll start the perks of being a wallflower i'm very excited about this because this is like one of my favorite books isla and the happily ever after is one of my favorite books as well but i really want to read this because I can't wait to annotate it. This book is very, very good. A lot of people love it and a lot of people are like, mm, they don't get it. <laughs> they don't get how good this book is. I don't know. I don't know what makes people not like this book, but I feel like it's so hard not to. I don't know. I'm going to reread it and see if I still like it, but I'm sure I do. I used to have like a sign that hung over my bed that says we are infinite. It was so cute. I got the idea from this um, blogger. I'm very full from the Panera Bread.
so it is 6.08 and I just finished Barakun. I decided that I'm not going to read the appendix and the afterward. I was skimming them and I realized mm, it's just a bunch of information that I guess I could read but it's not really important to the story. So how I feel about this book. When I was reading it last night, I did get a little bit emotional. I think I told you guys that already. This was a good book, a book that needed to be written. The only thing is that I expected more from it. I know it's small. I know it's very short, 93 pages of his story. But I don't know, I expected more detail. I mean, he's a very old man. So she says in the book that if he is a little hazy as to detail about 67 years, he is certainly to be pardoned. I mean, he did a really good job of telling the story and I was able to understand the way it's written, but I went expecting a lot more detail, a lot more stories about the people that he was surrounded with, about the slave masters, but he was very general. He stayed to his circle. He talked about how the black slaves born in America, the way they treated the slaves who weren't from America, who were actually brought from Africa. There was some, not really bullying, he didn't really talk about them doing anything except laughing at them, calling them ignorant. He talked a lot about his children. There were some parts that weren't clear. I thought his wife died too, but then there was another part that said other things. I don't know if I can really spoil you on a book that's about history. I don't think a lot of people will be reading this book if I were to recommend it to people who actually watch booktube. Most likely you guys aren't going to read it. The way it's written in his dialogue, I feel like that is what keeps people from possibly reading it. History is such a crazy thing. I really wish that America wasn't so terrible. I'm like, yes, this is my country, this is where I was born, but at the same time, the history. And now some people don't even realize how terrible it was. Like, you guys don't even comprehend how terrible slavery was. The, the massacres of the Native Americans and the camps. And just today, in 2018, with immigration, I don't know. I kind of feel like I don't have the intelligence to really go deep into that information. Anyway, moving on from that depressing talk. I've finished three books in five days. So what is next? I told you guys I was gonna read The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is my book that I have to wear a hat for. You see this hair? I just washed my hair today. Am I gonna wear a hat? I probably just rested on my head like just like like this or I could start Isla I could start Isla I'm kind of feeling like I want to start Isla or I can edit or I could watch Mocking J part two I think I'm gonna read a couple chapters of Isla so this is coming off I'm just gonna do a little refresher for you guys on my book to with on TBR these are the books I read so far is everyone hanging out without me and other concerns by Mindy Kaling this was my coin toss book which was a coin toss with Gabrielle Union's We're Going to Need More Wine, but this one won. This book is my book to movie adaptation. Read the book and watch the movie, Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. I've already watched Mockingjay Part 1. I'm going to watch Mockingjay Part 2 tonight. And then Barracoon, this is my pretty spine, beautiful spine, by Zora Neale Hurston. And these are finished. I have four books left out of seven. These are my four books that are left. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is my book that has green on the cover. Why Not Me by Mindy Kaling is my seventh book. Isla and the Happily Ever After. This is my book that has things in it that I want to do, which I said I want to do romantic things around Europe. And then we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chabosky. This is a book I have to wear with a hat. I'm enjoying karaoke right now on YouTube. <laughs> I haven't started the book yet. I haven't started it. And you got me like, don't you stop loving me. Don't quit loving me. Just stop loving me. Must be love on the break. <laughs> Baby, keep loving me. Just love me, yeah. What do I gotta do to get in? Your mother. I came outside for some weird reason and now I'm reading. I just started Island Happily Ever After.
I went out and got a frozen pizza. Right now I'm in my the living room of my dorm. I didn't know what to do. I guess I'm just bored, so I went outside. It's very humid here in Miami. Decided to read, and then I was like, okay, I'm already outside. Might as well just walk to Publix. I'm going to end the vlog here and watch Mockingjay Part 2. Because I actually, I said I wanted to do that. And it's a two-hour movie. I can finally see what happens at the end of the Hunger Games series. I already know what happens because of the book. Yeah, I could finally put that challenge, the book to movie adaptation challenge to rest. I hope you guys enjoyed my vlog for day five of Booktubeathon. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow with another vlog.